Hey there, good morning everyone. Here we are for the first, very first episode of Tug Hill Tomorrow's virtual birding series. I want to welcome you and I'm going to tell you a little bit about, um, about what is going to happen with the series. But before that, if you're watching, please uh, say in the comments that you're here. Hi Kim. Um, say where you're, where you're watching from. Um, are you, have you birded before? Are you interested in, in birding? I apologize, my first live, we're a little rocky, we're a little late, we're a little, <laughs> little discombobulated, so I'm gonna calm myself down and, um, and start in, so welcome. I'm gonna give a few more minutes for people to join in live, because our notification probably just went up and um, people are starting to tune in. Welcome, welcome. We're lucky in my environs today. I'm in the Watertown area and um, Tug Hill Tomorrow Land Trust's offices are located at the Zoo New York um, property in Thompson Park in Watertown. So if you get a chance, give us a call. Um, come visit the park. It's really, really cool. Um, the zoo is wonderful and the park itself is a real treasure, a real gem in Watertown. So if you get a chance to visit, do so. And actually that's where I'm gonna be birding today. So I wanted to let you know that. Welcome in everybody. Again, if you're watching, please tell me um, that you're here. Say hi, um, comment. Are you gonna go birding today or later this week? Um, have you seen any interesting birds? Today I want to give a little bit of uh, an overview of what we're going to do. Um, virtual birding is going to be the first Wednesday of every month this year. I'll be checking in. I might have guests here and there, but I'll be checking in at 10 o'clock in the morning every first Wednesday and um, give a little, uh, a few tips um, for birding for that day. And, hi Kim. <laughs> and talk about where I'm gonna go birding that day and what I might see um, based on where I might be going and what habitats might be there. Hi, Chris. And we will um, bird together that week. Um, I'll check back in live here at five o'clock. So if you wanna do your birding on Wednesday or not, or if you have notes from going birding earlier in the week, you can bring those. And we will compare notes at five o'clock um, every Wednesday, first Wednesday of the month. Hi, Denise. <laughs> Forgive me for my, my rough start. I'm, I'm still getting all my things together here. Lives are always nerve wracking for me. <laughs> so with birding, the first thing of birding, you'll notice that I am in layers. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, where you might bird and what kind of safety tips you might want to have because um, it's most important that you stay safe and have a good time. So one of the first things is, is to dress for the weather. If you're going to go out um, birding anywhere, you want to make sure that you have um, the proper clothing. You don't need to wear bright things except during hunting season. If you're out during hunting season, you do want a bright orange hat or orange coat or something. Um, but the rest of the year, <clears throat> You want to make sure you're dressed for the weather. You want to have maybe um, a snack and a little bit of water with you. Um, you may want to have um, good sturdy footwear um, if you're going to be anywhere muddy or snowy or whatever. So want to make sure that you have the right um, the right gear to wear to keep yourself safe. So today today actually here is going to be quite warm for what we've been having. Um, it's going to be more closer in the 30s. Um, we've been having wind chills of below zero. So on those days. I tend to bird from my window, to be honest. <laughs> um, you may have a, a bird feeder or you you may look out your window and find birds. The thing about birding is that it's easy to do because it's hard to find a place where there isn't at least one bird that you'll see. Um, and also, you can do it from your window. You can do it from a car ride. You can do it um, just sitting somewhere um, in your backyard or, on your front stoop. So birds are easily accessible. Um, they're interesting. Um, they have a lot of different colors, a lot of different hats. Um, so it's, it's a way for 
us to connect to the outdoors in a friendly way and in an interesting way because everything's usually not the same each day. It's something new and interesting every day. Hi everybody, so glad to have you here. Seth and Troy and Denise, Chris and Kim. Yay! Are you guys birders? Have you birded before? Please comment and let me know. So the first thing is that birds are everywhere. You could um, go and walk around like I do, or you could bird from your house. Um, there's lots of different options. Um, and the first, op the first thing you really want to do is stay safe. So you want to make sure that you're going to be comfortable. Um, in cold weather, I wear several layers. You see, I have a shirt, another shirt, this. I have a scarf with me. I have gloves with me. I have um, boots on. Um, I might bring a pair of extra shoes. Um, if I have don't have um, waterproof boots, I might bring an extra pair of shoes so that the shoes I get dirty could be taken off um, before I get in the car. Um, that kind of thing. So you want to make sure that you have um, the right clothing to keep you comfortable. The other thing you want to do is make sure you tell someone where you're going. Um, <laughs> so if something happens to you, they will know to come looking for you. Same with hiking. Um, same safety tips as with hiking. Make sure that someone knows where you're going. And often it's great to have at least three people to go birding with because you have more eyes to look around um, and you have a greater level of safety if you're going into a place where it's more um, secluded. Um, so it's a good idea to have uh, birding buddies with you as well. You can go alone though or you can just bird from your house by yourself. Um, Today, I am going to go up to Thompson Park in Watertown, and I am by myself, so I will be staying in an open public area. It's um, important when you're birding to try and be on public property. <laughs> Sometimes, if I'm walking around my neighborhood, um, I have to remind myself to stay on the sidewalk because I want to follow that bird, but I might be in somebody's backyard pretty quickly <laughs> if I don't. So, um, and they might not understand what I'm doing. So you might want to make sure that you're in a um, public access property um, so that you don't have conflicts with private landowners. It's surprisingly easy to wander when you're really interested in birds into um, areas where people don't understand what you're doing and um, where you're not on, on public property. So please take care with that issue. Um, also to go birding, before you go birding, it's important to prepare so um, to see so you can have some success at what you see. So if you're going to be um, going to a public park, take a look maybe on Google Maps, um, take a look at the satellite photo, see what times, types of habitats might be there and where the trails go so that you can figure out what kinds of anim what kinds of birds or other animals that you might encounter um, along the trail. At home, before you go out, you can go online and download um, a birding checklist. If you're going to be birding for the long haul, you like to bird a lot, and you want to complete a list for, for the, all the birds you see when you're birding for the rest of your life, you can print a birding checklist. Um, there are links from um, bird sites. I used audubon.org. Um, but there are also links to um, safety tips, how to bird, and bird checklists um, on allaboutbirds.org, which is the Cornell Lab of Ornithology in Ithaca, New York. I'll put the links to all of these things in the comments after our live. Um, but I keep my checklist and I keep my bird book. Sometimes I bring them with me, sometimes I leave them home. I usually have my bird book with me, um, but the checklist, sometimes I leave at home. And you can look through the bird book and understand how it's organized in groups of birds so that when you see a bird in the field, you can quickly locate that group of birds and identify it. Um, or you can take notes and bring it home and then look up in the bird book. All right, so bird book, bird checklist. To go out in the field, I usually have my handy dandy binoculars. You don't necessarily need a real fancy pair. Um, you can experiment with different kinds of brands and um, strengths for you to see what works best for you um, and go from there. So you have your binoculars and then I usually take a small notebook with me 
just a small notebook and a pencil in my pocket. So usually when I'm birding, I have my binoculars around my neck and I have my, um, my bird, my notebook and my pencil in my pocket. And if I carry a bag, I would probably add, um, a snack or, or a little bottle of water or something with me if I were going for a longer hike. This way I can um, take quick notes inside here um, while I'm walking and then come back home and look at my bird book and clarify more and make sure I get the right birds on my checklist, that kind of thing. There are online options as well, such as eBird and uh, Merlin, and I will talk about those later on in the burning series, so you can use those as well. So binoculars, bird book, checklist, um, dress for the weather, um, what else? A little snack, a little water, bird in a group if you can. Oh my gosh, so many people watching. Hi everybody. <laughs> this was scrolling as I'm trying to think of what I'm talking about as we go. Does anybody have any questions for today or any good sightings this week? The other option for you in, in, um, in, weather less pleasant, <laughs> if it's really, really cold like it's been or it's blowing and snowing out. Um, another option is just to bird at your bird feeder if you have a bird feeder. Now in my yard, the back of my home does not have windows that are conducive to watching a feeder in the backyard, but my neighbor has a bird feeder. And the windows on the side of my house have, um, outside those windows are many small shrubs and then one tree a little farther away. And often on their way to my neighbor's bird feeder and away from my bird feeder, they are stopping in those shrubs and bushes to feed on the seeds that they take. So one way of doing that is to take advantage of the nearness of other people's bird feeders <laughs> and notice where the birds stop and maybe you can see them right from your house. Um, another way to bird is to um, just sit outside and listen. Birders use both sight and sound and um, evidence to locate where birds have been and where birds are. Um, for instance, on our owl prowls at our bird sanctuary in Rutland, we use both our eyes and our ears, um, listening for owl calls, as well as looking for things they might have left behind, like a pellet of fur and bones or um, or um, excrement on the tree where they might have roosted, or a nest, or those kinds of things. So once you start to open your eyes to where birds are in your neighborhood or in your park, and what they do every day, you start to learn a little bit more about what to look for. Um, those are... Hi Rose, hi Emily, hi Kim, hi Josh, hi Ben. I'm so excited you're here. So today's is the launch of virtual birding. And again, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to come on at 10 o'clock live on the first Wednesday of every month. Talk a little bit about birding. Do something like today. Give some safety tips and some um, tips for successful birding. Tell you where I'm going to go. Then at 5 o'clock on the first Wednesday, I will come back and check in. All of these lives will be um, recorded and they will be posted as videos on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch. So if you didn't get a chance to see this live, you can go back and watch um, as a replay. Any um, resources or, um, or yeah, resources or uh, websites or events I, I mentioned during my live, um, I will put a link in the comments or descriptions on those videos so you can go back and take a look at that and get those links and be able to utilize those. Um, what else? I may have guests. So we'll be doing this through the year and I may um, be able to persuade some experienced birders to come and share their experiences as well. Um, this is all to encourage you to explore birds in your area, to learn more about them, and to understand their importance in the larger um, health of our ecosystems. Tug Hill Tomorrow Land Trust um, is a donor-supported nonprofit organization. 
We work on a voluntary basis with landowners all over the 2100 square mile region of Tug Hill um, to protect important habitats in both working and wild landscapes. So we may protect a working forest, we may protect a wild forest, we may protect a farm, we may protect um, all sorts of different types of open space landscapes that are important habitat for the wildlife that call Tug Hill home or who travel through it. So that's what we do. And we also try to um, educate and entertain and inform um, to build awareness and um, really to build awareness and love for Tug Hill and all it has to offer. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're taking part in our virtual birding. I encourage you to stay safe, dress for the weather, bring a snack and water, have what you need available. Um, you don't need to bird for long. You could bird for, you know, 10 minutes. Um, a more extensive trip, sometimes I go for half a day um, if it's a special spot and I'm looking for something in particular. So that's up to you how you want to bird. But um, you can bird from your feeder, from your window, look out your window, you can go on hikes, you can go on a car ride. Um, I do advise that if you do like to bird, don't drive the car while you're birding. I am a little hazardous on the road sometimes, I'll admit. So I encourage you to have a driver, a designated driver for birding. Um, also, that's another safety tip. If you do see birds from your from your car that you want to explore, um, definitely uh, circle around, pull over, pull well off out of traffic, put your flashers on, and use your binoculars. Um, if you're getting out and there's a bird that you're going to look for, uh, if you're getting out of your car, it's a good idea to get out quietly um, so you're not disturbing that bird and you can get a better look. Just a little tip. So there you have it for this morning. All my safety tips and encouragement. Oh, Nepal, Emily. Oh, that must have been so much fun. Yes, one, th one more thing I wanted to mention um, with bird books. I do have a general National uh, Geographic bird book for all of North America. There are um, beginner birding books as well for kids and really beginning birders. Um, Peterson's puts a great series out. Um, there are also bird books that are specific to certain areas of the United States or the world. So if you're going on a trip somewhere, you might want to make sure that your bird book um, has the birds that you might see in it. So if you're going to the western United States, you may need a western United States bird book or an eastern United States bird book. Um, sometimes you can use the whole North American bird book. So do keep that in mind. I'm just scanning to make sure I di I'm getting any questions, any comments. Coming in. Does anybody have any questions today? Feel free to type any questions in the comments. As I said, I will be back at 5 o'clock this afternoon. I invite you to check in again and um, tell me all about your experiences today. Um, if you have, you know, what birds you see, were you, um, were you uh, excited, were you surprised to see some birds? It's nice to start birding now in wintertime here because um, you can get used to the birds that overwinter here. And then when the birds that tend to migrate come back in, you notice them as different and you can start to learn those as well. So I encourage you to pick a place where you can move freely, public property or your own yard. <laughs> um, be careful about where you tread. Um, maybe get some buddies to go with you. Go out today, see what you can find. I'll be out at the park today in Watertown, and I'll come back at 5 um, to let you know what I see. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.